This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I am Dan Aliesh. Welcome back to the Ice Image of the Month. We are concluding our episode focusing on left atrial appendage occlusion. Now, to summarize, for part one, we went over T versus ice imaging, some of the, some of the comparisons, the data for using ice for left atrial appendage occlusion, as well as your core views. For people interested in those concepts, please, for, please refer to part one. Now in part two, we focused on deployment, um, all the different assessments around that, as well as special amulet considerations. For those interested in those concepts, please refer to part two. Now for part three, we'll get into troubleshooting as well as some kind of fun future work with 4D ice. And I will start off our discussion with our first prompt to Sandeep. Um, a beautiful case where he identifies the leak on ice as well as fluoro and then embolizes. So I'd, I'd ask you to walk us through the different images and also your process in, in treating this patient. And I'll start with the upper left hand for you. Yeah, so uh, uh, thanks, Dan. And this, this patient, uh, you know, had a very uh, trabeculated appendage and they underwent a Watchman uh, flex device implant. And bef you know, at the time of the implant, uh, we we thought that we had you know a one to two millimeter leak based on all the imaging. But when they came back the, for the post imaging, the leak was bigger based on the CT sizing, and it was definitely uh, uh, bigger than uh, you know four or five four. I think it was four or five millimeters, and that's too big. So the first image shows uh, you know an ice image that's. Uh, you know, capturing the leak. And if you look on the, you know, there's a little prompt I made that that's the area where you are able to see the, the leak uh, from the from the ice being in the left atrium and, and looking at the left atrial appendage. This view is uh, it's sort of the, you know, a hybrid of uh, the transmitral view uh, with a very sort of, uh, you know, uh, tight right steer. So I can see that uh, that corner quite well there. And then if we look at the fluoroscopic panel, you know, I have a wire uh, that's inside the uh, leak, and I'm injecting contrast with a multi-purpose catheter, and it's also delineating that leak. And uh, and so, you know, it confirms that the leak that you see in the ice is confirmed by the fluoroscopic version. And then as we go to the panel three, you know, I'm deploying an AVP2 plug. And, you know, there are several sort of choices to close the leaks that are available. There are hydrophilic coils and there are various kinds of plugs you can use. For this patient, based on the size and length of the leak, I, I thought an AVP2 plug would be really a nice way to close it. And in this particular image, you can see that the plug is partly opened as I'm pulling the sheath back. And then moving on to the, to the panel four, is where the plug has been fully deployed and you see the small disc of the plug that's visible, uh, that's more echogenic uh, right near the, the face of the device. And that really provides a complete seal to this leak. And, uh, and you know, we did post imaging to confirm that the leak remained uh, closed on follow-up. And, and I think, uh, you know, this, uh, this really speaks to the value of the intracardiac echo this was a 45 minute MAC uh, procedure. And, you know, uh, compared to, you know, having to do this under general anesthesia with DE guidance uh, that, you know, you can definitely do that, but that's not always necessary as you gain more experience. You could even visualize sort of the smaller channels around the, around the device. And I guess this is a good time to ask both of you this question. Now, to what degree are you relying upon intracardiac echo versus fluoroscopy these days in your respective procedures? So I uh, honestly, I, I think they work uh, well together, hand in hand. Um, there, there's been, you know, maybe one or two cases where we absolutely have not been able to use contrast uh, for one reason or another and, and performed it with zero contrast. But um, and, and because of that, fluoro obviously may have a smaller role, but they, they complement one another. There are certain things that you'll see on fluoroscopy that you can then confirm what it is you're seeing on ice or at least refute it, you know, and, and, that, and that's the nice thing about it. 
Um, sometimes there are certain things we may see on fluoroscopy that we're a bit concerned about, but we verify that you know it is a, a, a adequate occlusion. There's not much shoulder. There's good uh, uh, compression and stability of the device, all using ice. So I, I think they go hand in hand. No, I think I couldn't agree more uh, uh, that uh, these are very complementary uh, uh, sort of uh, technologies that we are using at the same time. And you know whether you're using TE or ICE, I think the fluoroscopy is, is clearly very, very helpful. And especially for a device like Watchman device where you are going to go into the distal part of the appendage, I think the characteristic, especially if you don't do pre-CT, you may not realize despite even TEE imaging that what you are getting yourself into with the distal part of the device. Or you may look at a TEE and you may say, well, I don't have enough depth or I, I really don't have a good target. And the fluoroscopy with contrast can help delineate those targets. And, and especially if you have proximal pectinates, a lot of times the TEE or ice imaging could fool you that you have a good seal. But when you inject contrast, you can tell that there is there is a leak there, or you know even if it doesn't look bad, it's going to be bad as you saw in the last case as you as you follow up the patient for you know forty five to ninety days. Great, thanks so much, guys. Wonderful comments. So I think we'll jump to our final slide here, and this this image um, I'll, I'll put to Amar. Um, Forty ice. You know, what is the what what do you see is the value for this tech technology and what do you see as the future? Yes, yeah, so this is kind of the new kid on the block. Um don't I don't use it routinely. Uh I've used it in, in a uh, number of cases. Typically, uh it's been if we've had a um post appendage occlusion procedure that's been referred for leak closure. So similar to uh what Sandeep had just shown you. The nice thing about the 4D ice is that you can get multi-planar imaging uh, and so kind of uh, biplane imaging. So by having the catheter positioned in one place, you can get multiple imaging modalities. And the other thing you can do is get 3D imaging, as you can see in the large right-hand panel of that figure. And so in this particular case, it was very similar to Sandeep's one that he just showed. He just showed where a patient had undergone previous uh, Watchman Flex implantation, but had a uh, leak that was identified on follow-up imaging. And therefore uh, they came back for leak closure. And in this case, you can actually see the 3D uh, rendition of the AVP2 plug. And, and so the, the nice thing about using the 4D ice is you can get a 3D depiction of, of uh, the leak, which is often otherwise just uh, shown as a 2D image, whether it's conventional ice or whether it's using fluoroscopic imaging. And that can give you insights into, into the complexity of the leak. You know, it, often it may be a crescentic uh, leak rather than just a small opening that's, that would be uh, fully covered with one device, for example. And Sandeep, I also let you. I know that you've uh, done some with 40 ice as well. So, could you comment on where you think the value of this imaging is and where you see it in the future? Yeah, I think 40 ice is certainly the way of future for a lot of the, you know, left atrial appendage closure and some of the structural and EP interventions. I think as we are able to get multi planar uh, imaging from the same place, so it reduces the need to move the catheter as much. Also, you know, you can find the most stable spot, leave the catheter there and, and just sort of, you know, uh, you can you can sort of have a park and play approach rather than there's a lot of lot of movement involved. Uh, I think uh, the 3D imaging would be really helpful to assess the device before releasing, especially if you suspect any leak. Because right now, you know, we usually will do CT to assess the complexity of the leak. So when during the case, we are able to you know, work with the 2D anatomy and a live 3D will eliminate that need. I think the biggest barrier will remain for a while is the cost and if the reimbursement would sort of rise to allow uh, us to use this technology because of its... Uh, newer and more expensive nature. And some of the newer ice, uh, uh, 3D, 4D ice imaging can really provide very, very excellent uh, imaging uh, almost, you know, one of the things that was an issue with earlier 3D ice technology that you lost the, the 2D ice resolution had gone down significantly. And, but the newer 3D ice technologies, 
the 2D resolution is actually equivalent or better to the to the you know the conventional 2D eyes, which would really help the adoption. And and one other thing to add, if I may, Dan, is I, I think eventually this may actually enhance the adoption of ice for uh, appendage closures because of the um, ability to obtain multiple views from the same catheter position. It may be easier uh, for people who are new to ice catheter usage. But as Sandeep said, cost is prohibitive at this point, I think, for routine use. Yeah, I think, and one of the important things to understand that so when you start an ICE imaging program for left atrial appendage closure, it is important to have a really good TE team backing you up because you know early on you may not be able to get all the views, and you know having the having the imagers uh, guide you, especially what you're looking at if you're uncomfortable would be helpful. And also, it is very fair to do a number of cases with both TE and ICE imaging and really get comfortable with it uh, and before you sort of dive fully into it. I know excellent points all around. And I think that you know, to summarize what we learned this episode, right? T versus ICE. I mean, I think both are great imaging modalities, but maybe ICE adds the ability to have a single operator to reduce general anesthesia and to improve your efficiency. It's clear that you can obtain multiple ICE views to assess the appendage from multiple vantage points. Additionally, you can do troubleshooting for both types of devices. And the future looks really bright for, for 4D ICE as long as it becomes affordable. Um, thank you both for joining us. Um, we really appreciate your insights. And thank you all for tuning in to the Ice Image of the Month um, and Heart Rhythm TV. Uh,